Good afternoon. I'm so glad that you could join me again today here as we look at some truths about troubles. My bitterness will destroy me. And friend, your bitterness will destroy you. If we're not cautious, troubles can cause us to get bitter because we have a wrong perspective. And this afternoon, we're going to look at a lady in the Old Testament who was bitter in the midst of her difficulties and yet, if she would have trusted God, he could have made a difference. Before we get into the Word of God this afternoon, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you. I thank you for your love. I thank you for this great opportunity that we have to study your Word. God, I pray that you will motivate us to draw close to you as opposed to draw away from you in the midst of our trials. God, sometimes we just get bitter and angry because of the situations. God, I pray that you will help us to live faithful to you always and only trusting you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friend, as you look at your life this afternoon, would you say that it is described by bitterness or by peace? Would you say that you are more defined by bad attitudes, maybe even as a result of difficult times in your life? Or are you defined by God and his character because he continues to mold you into his image? This afternoon, we're going to look at the story of Naomi, not just a f historical story, but really the reality of her heart and what was going on in Naomi's heart. So this afternoon, we're really going to be highlighting the book of Ruth, chapter number one, as we look a lot at the story of Naomi, a little bit at Ruth, but especially at Naomi and see the bitterness in her own heart. How are you and I going to live life? As we stop and we think about the book of Ruth, it really begins with a lack of faith. When you go through difficulties and trials in life, you either can have faith in God or faith in yourself. Well, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, he led his family not by faith, but rather by sight. They lived in Bethlehem. In fact, Ruth chapter 1, verse number 1 says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Now, we don't know exactly what was going on in Elimelech's life and Naomi and their family. We know that they had sons. We know that it was a time of famine. We can deduce from this that they weren't trusting God. Now, again, we can always take care of ourselves. In fact, God wants us to be faithful to do what he's called us to do. But where was it that God promised to take care of his people? Right in the promised land. Remember, this is not before the promised land. They had already been freed from Exodus. They've gone into the promised land. And here they are going through a difficult time. But God was right there and he was able to sustain them. Of course, God can do that anywhere. But Elimelech was learning in his life. He had to live by faith. But sadly, this was a hard lesson for him. As Elimelech took his wife and his two boys to Moab, verse 1 said they were going just to sojourn. The word sojourn means <clears throat> to turn aside from the road. Really, it's the idea of being a guest. So they weren't going with the plans of we're going to permanently dwell here. We just need to take care of ourselves. And again, God wants us to be wise, whether it's with our finances or situations. But God also wants us to trust him. They had come from Bethlehem, which really the city of Bethlehem, that word, that name means house of bread. So as we stop and we think about this, God was taking care of them. And yes, even though there was famine and difficulty, God promised to take care of them. God led his people there. And Elimelech said, I don't know what else to do. I've got to go take care of my family. We're going to go to Moab, away from God's people, really away from God's blessing." Elimelech, his name means God is my king, and yet he didn't live that way. He wasn't trusting God. He was from the tribe of Judah, which was really where the promised Messiah was going to come. He knew this, and yet he couldn't trust God right now. See, sometimes we go through life and we say, I know I can trust God for salvation. Maybe you, you're watching and you know Jesus Christ is Savior. You're confident of that. It's not just enough to be saved. You and I must trust God for each and every phase of life, no matter if it's a difficult circumstance or an easy time. God cares. Well, they went to sojourn. 
and yet their sojourning turned into dwelling. It was there that their boys ended up marrying some Moabites. But you know, we look at the boys. Back to verse number two. It says, And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem and Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. They ended up dwelling there. Well, we look at the boys' names. Malon means sick or puny. Maybe you have a name and you were made fun of as a kid. Could you imagine your name being sick or puny? What a name to be teased over. Why was it that Naomi named Malon this? Chilion means pining. Really, it's someone who's wasting away in disease. Now, maybe there were some struggles, but, you know, it kind of looks like maybe Naomi had a negative outlook on life. Maybe her life wasn't characterized by living by faith and looking at God, but maybe it was just her circumstances and situations and just trying to cope. We don't know exactly the details behind and before their move, but these are some things that we can glean from their names and just some of the places where they were. So friend, how are you doing today? I don't know exactly where you're at in life, what phase of life, or what situations are going on. God cares. God knows. Don't run away from where God has led you. That was a lesson that Naomi sadly had to learn. So really, we see the condition. They were in famine. They were feeling like they were going to die. How could things get worse? But as you've read, maybe you're already familiar with the historical narrative here, things did get worse. In fact, really, I encourage you to read Ruth 1, really the whole chapter, and see how things got worse really before they began to get better. But a big problem here was Naomi's outlook on life. She was bitter. She struggled. She didn't live by faith. So her husband ends up dying. Her boys end up dying. There are some consequences for them moving into the land. Life, yeah, maybe they were taken care of for a little bit, but then her husband died. Her boys ended up getting married, but they didn't marry into the nation of Israel or other Jews, those who sought God. Rather, they married outside of what God had commanded them. Deuteronomy 7, verses 3 and 4, they knew this command. It says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. Was this why God allowed them to die? I don't know. But they knew these commands, and they chose to not obey them. Friend, maybe you know some specific commands that God has called you to do. You, you've read the word of God. You know some specific things. And you're not doing them. Friend, beware. God doesn't want to destroy you. But friend, God wants to bring and allow consequences into your life to draw you back to him. That's what God's doing in Naomi's life. And yet she doesn't get drawn back to God yet. She seems to keep going down this rabbit hole, keep going down this negativity in her attitude, in fact, in her bitterness. So friend, be careful what you do. Really a side lesson we can learn from this. Be careful where you put your family, yourself, Maybe it's your work situation. Maybe there's a work environment that will draw you away from God. Uh, maybe your kids and it's school or friends or uh, maybe it's hobbies. Friend, whatever circumstances you allow in your life, oh, be cautious because those can lead you away from walking close to God and obeying Him. Moving to Moab. That didn't mean the boys had to marry Moabites, but they did because that's where they were at. So friend, be, be cautious. Naomi, her boys married wrong. Then she lost her husband. She lost her boys. She's getting ready to go back to the promised land because she realizes, okay, God's taking care of his people there. She tells her daughter-in-laws to go back. And the one does. But the other says, I will go with you. Well, what again is it that causes Naomi to go back? She had nobody other than her daughters-in-law right there in Moab. She had seen that God had taken care of his own. Back to Ruth chapter 1. It says in verse 6, Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. God takes care of his own. Where God places you, he will take care of you. 
So friend, if you're in the middle of the will of God, you can trust God even when trials come. Whether it's COVID, whether it's some other illness, financial difficulty, maybe it's a relationship difficulty. But friend, if you're in the middle of God's will, you can trust Him. Trust Him. So there are consequences. There are a lot of things going on in Naomi's life. But she decides, I'm going to go back to the promised land. She's going from one thing to the other and back and forth. It's kind of like uh, you could picture two horses. They're both in their own field, and between the two horses, there's a fence. Each horse has his head through the fence and is eating grass on the other side. Isn't that how we often see life? Gra the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And yet the other horse was right there, wasn't eating it. And sometimes that's how we are. Again, Elimelech and Naomi, they thought they could take care of themselves in Moab. And yet there were a lot of negative consequences that came because they left the will of God. Friend, even when life is difficult, don't leave the will of God. The safest place you can be is right in the middle of God's will. You may say, but it's so tough. You don't know how much worse it could be. Look what happened to Naomi. So here, she goes back, but she still has a bad attitude. Verse 7, she went forth out of the place and her two daughters-in-law with her and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. Verse 8, Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord dealt, deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. Now we know that Ruth continued on with her. But Naomi's struggling here. She's battling. In fact, verse 13 says, Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone against me. See, it wasn't a consequence, wasn't it, that the hand of the Lord was against her. She, she and her family had walked out of God's will. And God was trying to draw her back. Again, sometimes we do have consequences of our own making. Because <laughs> we have choices we made. Here's the complaint that she's doing. She's saying, God is against me. Maybe you're in the middle of a trial and you say, Just, God is against me. Does God even care? Why doesn't God bless my life? Why isn't God's blessing on me? Friend, just because you're going through difficult times doesn't mean God's blessing isn't on you. There are a number of characters throughout the Bible who God had blessed them, but there were difficult times they went through. God was molding them and making them into exactly what he wanted them to be. David, the many times he was hunted by King Saul. So here Naomi, her complaint is that God is against me. And yet God promised in the Old Testament, he says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. In the New Testament, we're reminded again and again of God's unconditional, long-suffering love. So, friend, don't complain that God is against you. Ruth chapter 1, verse 20. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. She says, I'm bitter. Mara means bitter. She's blaming God for her problems. But... But friend, we can't blame God for our problems. Again, sometimes God allows difficulties. And, and it's not because of any sin or wrong choice of your own. God wants to use that. Even as Job says, when I'm tried, I shall come forth as what? As gold. So here, she's blaming God for her problems. Really, some of these problems were a result of her husband's and her own choice to leave. You may say, well, her husband made her leave. Oh, we, again, we don't know all the background. But it does seem, even from the names that Naomi gave her sons, that maybe she had an attitude problem. Friend, what's your attitude like? God wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't blame God, because God never makes mistakes. There's a song that Ron Hamilton wrote with majesty music. God never moves without purpose or plan. And the song continues on, and in the chorus he says, Oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistake. He knoweth the end of each path that I take. And when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. Really, when you see God for who he is, and then you see yourself for who you are, you can't blame God. You will see your own sinf sinfulness. Even Job, in Job 42, verse 6, said, Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Why? 
because he had seen himself in light of seeing God. So see yourself, see your circumstances in light of God. See again, Ruth 1 verse 21, Naomi says, I went out full and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me and the Almighty hath afflicted me. She's blaming God, blaming God, blaming God. Yeah, she went out full. Remember, why did they leave the land though? Because they were hungry. There was a famine. They were afraid they were going to die. But now she said, I went out full. Isn't it incredible when we get out of situations? We look back and perspective changes a lot. A lot of times people say hindsight is twenty twenty. Well, friend, the reality is that when we look back in a situation, it may have been better off for us there than when we chose to walk our own way. I've seen countless stories of people who went hiking in the wilderness and got off the trail because they knew they could catch up with the trail. A few weeks back, some of my kids and I were in the mountains of North Carolina. We had stayed there as a family, and then some of the kids and I went out for a hike. And they said, oh, there's the path. I said, but we're not going to get off it to go try to find another way because all I could do is see us getting off that path because we know where the next one is. That's what Naomi and Elimelech knew but it led their life down a path they didn't want to go. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, hold you longer than you want to stay, and really cost you more than you want to pay. Naomi didn't want to lose her boys. That was even worse than going hungry, where God could have taken care of her. Again, God can take care of us anywhere, but God does allow us consequences based on our choices. You know, we see a Bible illustration with this. Paul and Silas, what if they would have complained they were in jail at midnight. Do you think that the jailer would have ever said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Well, of course not. What difference would God have made in their lives? Paul, when he was in prison, he said in Philippians 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. How could he do that when he was in difficult times? Because his perspective was on God, not on himself. When you and I look at ourselves and at our circumstances, negativity arises. So friend, look at what God has done. See, Naomi kept looking at the bad things, the bad things, but what are some good things? Even in the midst of her difficulties, God was merciful. He brought her Ruth. Ruth was faithful. Ruth was loyal. Ruth loved her. Back in verses 16 and 17, Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee in me. She was committed to her mother-in-law. <laughs> really, it wasn't because of any of Naomi's good character. It seemed like she was just negative and, and bitter. In fact, she told the people when she got back home, I'm bitter, call me Mara. But she didn't look at the blessings of having Ruth in her life. Friend, in, instead of looking at the negative side of your trials and difficulties and getting bitter over those things and, and trying to blame God and looking at all these negative things, take a piece of paper and a pencil and write down some of the positive things God's done, some of the blessings. You can breathe. Maybe you can walk or eat or drink. Or maybe, again, you've got technology. You're not starving. I mean, so many different blessings as we just stop and look at God and then look at our own situations again. So again, we saw the condition of Naomi. There was tough times, certainly. But the consequences of her choice were more than she wanted to pay. But really, we can draw some conclusions as we've studied here Ruth chapter 1 today. Some conclusions that we can look at. Number one, page 85 of our book, R.B. Willett wrote, says, never leave the place of blessing unless God tells you to. You know, military, maybe you've been in the military. When you're given an order, you don't change until you're given orders to change, right? You, you don't stop doing what you're told to do until you have new orders that arrive. And as Christians, sometimes we say, hey, it's difficult, I'm running. Well, wait a second. If God has placed you where you are, then you can trust him right there. Naomi and Elimelech, they could have trusted God right in Bethlehem, the house of bread, where God had them. So never leave the place of blessing unless God tells you to. Again, God does lead people away of blessings. You know, Philip, he left a great revival so he could go to a desert place and witness to one man. 
and one man get saved. Joseph, he had a great place and a blessing in the middle of his family. Yes, there were difficulties with his brothers, but his dad loved him and blessed him. And yet God allowed him to go through a lot of trials in Egypt. Why? To prepare the way for his family in the future. So God does lead out of blessings. But, but friend, don't just run from where you are because you see something different that you want. Keep walking with the Lord. Trusting him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Friend, don't get bitter over your difficulties, but rather look to God. He is faithful. He wants to grow and change you. So never leave the place of blessing unless God tells you to do so. You usually have more than you think you do. Uh, Naomi... In fact, when she was going back, she said, I left full and now I'm returning empty. Well, when she was leaving, she was leaving empty. But she realized that there were more blessings in life other than just food and financial provisions. So, so stop and think about the blessings God has given you even right now in the midst of your difficulties. No matter how bad it seems in the will of God, it is worse out of the will of God. Think of Jonah. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, and yet it was much worse for him out of the will of God, wasn't it? Naomi. She didn't know how she would cope, and, and Elimelech, again, he was the head of the household. They didn't know how they're going to cope and provide for their boys, puny, and the one who has a wasting disease. How are they going to provide for them? Well, they went their own way, and there were just natural consequences. Your material decisions will have a major impact on the spiritual future of your children. Again, they were so focused on how are we going to take care of the physical needs, they forgot about the spiritual side. The boys ended up marrying pagan wives, and with God's mercy, he really allowed Ruth to be drawn to him, but that, that isn't always how it happens. And yet, Naomi, she ended up going back, but there were a lot of things that happened that may not have happened had they stayed in the will of God. So, again, think about your material blessings. Don't just strive for all the stuff. What does that mean for those you live with, your spouse or your kids, maybe your grandkids or others around you? God always takes care of his children who stay in his place. The psalmist said in Psalm 37, verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So, so friend, how about that? The psalmist says, God takes care of his own. So how are we going to trust God and obey? Again, God takes care of his own. He took care of Elijah. He fed him with ravens. He took care of Paul through the shipwrecks. Really, another lesson we can see from this is that there are blessings even in Moab. Even though Naomi and Elimelech should not have gone there, there were blessings. Ruth was one of them. She did turn to God. She loved God. And she was loyal to Ruth. Or she was loyal to Naomi. So friend, there are blessings. Even when you've walked away, don't think, oh, that's it. No, it's never too late to go back. In fact, that's another blessing and a lesson we can learn. But as we stop and we think about the blessings of difficult times, the most impressive love is that which is directed at the unlovely, our people that says. That's how Ruth loved Naomi. Naomi's attitude stunk. In fact, again, she said she was bitter. But Ruth loved her anyway. And really, that's when love shines the brightest. Maybe there are people in your life that their attitude just stinks right now. Maybe you're not the one battling bitterness. Maybe others are. Friend, you can love them as Ruth did and help to draw them back to the Lord and point them back to the one who loves them and will take care of them. We must not blame God when we make incorrect choices. Naomi kept doing this again and again and again. But God took care of her. And Ruth learned that. And then, of course, Naomi was drawn back to the Lord and rejoiced in him. So, friend, as long as you're alive, you can get right with God again. That's a lesson that Naomi learned. And, friend, I hope that's a lesson you can learn. Don't let your bitterness destroy you, as it destroys so many people. Hebrews talks about how a root of bitterness springs up, and thereby many be defiled. Not just yourself, but your life will affect so many. We saw that with Naomi's life. But friend, you can trust God. Will you be faithful? 
Will you walk with God and not let bitterness destroy you, but rather trust God for who he is? Father, we thank you for your love. I thank you for each person who's joined in this study. I pray that you will help us to honor you. God, help us not to be bitter, but to really focus on you and let you make a difference in all of our lives. In the trials, help us not to get bitter, but to trust you and walk by faith. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friend, I'm so glad you took time to join us here today. I hope that this study in bitterness has challenged you. Maybe you're bitter and you need to deal with that with God before you have more consequences. But maybe you know someone who is. Maybe God would allow you to love them back to the Savior and help point them back to how great God is, even in the midst of difficult times. Until next time, let's keep developing the mind of Christ.